from your project folder make a new folder called funk call switch to the new folder and uh, from inside the folder start visual studio code in visual studio code create a new file called requirements.txt and uh, put the packages needed for this project inside that uh, file for this project we need five packages and before installing them we create a virtual environment and activate the virtual environment with uh, vn uh, scripts and activate the name of the virtual environment appears before our prompt and we are good to go to install the packages we install the packages with pip install r requirements.txt Depending on the speed of your machine, this will take some time till all of the packages are installed and after the installation is done, the prompt comes back and uh, we can install uh, and we can clear our screen. The next step is to create an OpenAI API key. So close the terminal and navigate to OpenAI in your API keys. Here create a new secret key, give it a name like function call, create a secret key, copy it and close the pop-up. Back in Visual Studio Code, we create a new file called .env and in .env we create a variable openAI underscore API underscore key and paste the new key inside. After saving the file we go back to openAI but at this time in the documentation part and here is a section called function calling. Scroll down till you come to the example and uh, copy the code by clicking on the button. Back in Visual Studio Code, create a file called function underscore calling underscore docs dot ipynb for interactive Python notebooks and paste the uh, example code over there. First, we need to select the kernel for the notebook. Here we use our virtual environment. After the kernel is set, we can start reformatting the code. We can split the cells by Ctrl, Shift and Dash on Windows. This helps us to chunk the code in smaller cells and run the cells individually. It's like debugging the code cell by cell. We can add and move some uh, markdown cells in the notebook. This helps us to section the code and put some remarks for later. After creating some markdown cells, the file uh, get outlined in different sections. You can see it in Visual Studio Code in the outline section. We can speed up the process of reformatting the sample code, as it's merely splitting the code in cells and adding some markups. To make debugging easier, we remove the run conversation function and adjust the code. After the reformatting is done, we are now ready to run the code cell by cell. By running the first cell, we import OpenAI and JSON and can use them in our code. Next, we add a code cell to add some functionality and manage the OpenAI API key. We get the value we stored it in .n file and assign it to the API key. After running this cell, we can connect to OpenAI. Next, we have our Python function. Keep in mind that only the location is mandatory and the unit is optional. To test the function, we call it with the location Hamburg. And sure enough, we get the return value as a string. We can use json.loads to convert the string in a dictionary. 
To check, we can click on variables and we can clearly see that the return value is string and return parts is a dict. We can close variables and uh, as you can see, uh, we can add a new uh, cell and extract only the temperature from our dictionary and it returns a 72. And uh, this is different uh, as the return value. We got a, a big string with all of the information and it's difficult to extract only the temperature. But if we convert it to uh, return parts, then it's a dictionary and from a dictionary you can easily extract the temperature. So the next part is the available function. That means we have at one side uh, this uh, function, the, this Python function, which acts like a black box. And in the next section, we inform ChatGPT that we have this function available. We have to define a name and a description and uh, define the parameters which uh, it needs and uh, define which variable is uh, required. Here, in this case, we have location and unit, and required is only location. Functions is a list, so we can have multiple functions, and in this case, we have only one function. So, the next part is messages. A message is a dictionary. It has two parts. One is a role and in a role part it can be user, it can be assistant or function and it has a second part that is the content. That means in the case of the user it would be the prompt. In this case, uh, what's the weather like in Boston? We do some uh, reformatting to make debugging easier and assign the dictionary to user messages and add user messages to the list and lastly we print messages and this would be the same result as before so if we run the cell we get the same role is user and the content what's the weather like in Boston. For the first run we wanted to have a prompt which doesn't use our function so we put a generic function like uh, a generic question like where is the capital of Germany? To answer this question, ChatGPT doesn't need our function. So it's uh, important to see what is the difference when uh, ChatGPT calls a function and uh, when it doesn't. In the next cell, we notice that we use a special model and this is GPT 3.5 Turbo 0613 and uh, these are optimized for function calling. Here we clean up the cell and uh, we assign the messages which we already have uh, assigned with the role user and content uh, is our prompt and uh, in functions uh, is the available functions we already assign uh, to this variable and uh, we uh, use the function call auto. That means uh, ChatGPT can decide if it uses the function or not. And uh, after assigning all of this, we run the cell. And in this case, we get an error. And the error is because uh, the functions is not defined. This is typical if you forget to run a cell. So we go up and uh, we run this cell and from this point functions is now defined and we scroll down and run chat completion again. This time uh, we get an answer from chat GPT and we can analyze the answer. So if we scroll down we see here uh, the most important thing is choices and here in choices we have a part which is the finish reason and if here is stop that means the chat gpt could give us the answer and uh, this time it doesn't need any function to call and 
and uh, give us the answer because it uh, is already trained with this answer and uh, doesn't need any additional help. So the finish reason is stop and uh, if we see our next cell we are only interested in choices the, uh, the index of zero and messages and we, if you scroll up we can uh, see it in the whole answer of the chat GPT that means we are only interested in that part uh, in the message part the message part relies in choices which is a list and uh, in the index of zero and uh, the message part of it so we extract exactly response choices at the index of zero and the message part and if we run it first we doesn't see any output but uh, in uh, Jupyter you only need to uh, write the, fun uh, the variable name and if you run it again you see the part so the message came back from ChatGPT has two parts one is the role, which is assistant, and one is the content, the capital of Germany is Berlin. And there is no third part uh, function call. We can use this fact uh, in an if statement as a condition. So we add a code uh, cell, and here we add an if statement and check if uh, the message has a function call uh, part. Here, in this case, it doesn't have, so we go to the else part of the if statement and uh, print no function call and uh, go through the messages in a loop and the user, where is the capital of Germany and the assistant ChatGPT is uh, answering it's Berlin. For the second time, uh, we now wanted to change the prompt so that ChatGPT decides to use our function which we described to, him, to it. So we change it to what's the weather like in Berlin in Fahrenheit. This matches exactly with the function description we already gave to ChatGPT. So this time if we run uh, chat completion with the same uh, information and the same uh, parameters we get an answer and and this time we notice in choices which uh, is still a list of chat gpt objects you see this time that chat gpt says uh, the role is assistant that means the answer comes from chat gpt it doesn't have any content but it wanted to use a function call the function it wanted to use is get current weather with the parameter location Berlin and unit Fahrenheit. And we see that the finish reason is not stop, instead is function call. That means that it goes further and uh, ChatGPT tries to, uh, another step to answer the prompt of the user. So if we this time uh, check the response choices, uh, zero and messages, we see uh, the same information uh, above and this time we see the part function call. So when we uh, this time use our cell, we go in the if statement in the first part and here we can see chat GPT wants to make another function call. The function it wanted to call is get current weather and the argument for the function is location Berlin and unit Fahrenheit which it got with JSON loads from a response message function call arguments. Now we can go to the second part of our code and here we have the same condition that means we check if the response message has the function call part. Here we can use the debug functionality of a Jupyter Notebook. We click on this button and uh, to go to the next line <coughs> we can use F10. That means if uh, we click on F10 we go uh, just like debugging to the next uh, line and here if you put multiple times F time 
if uh, then you see that here the function name is now assigned get current weather and uh, this is uh, from available function the key and the key points to a function and if you check here uh, at this point this is a function here is the key get current weather that means the name of the function is get current weather and you want to call this function the next part is to get the arguments for this function call and you get this from uh, function args as you can see the parameters is, uh, is uh, transferred correctly and we use function args location for the location and uh, unit for the unit uh, parameter that means we use a function call which the name of the function is in the available function key and it points to a function then we have location and unit which we got the uh, values from our response and if we run it we get a function response and this is the same response which the function gives with the parameter and we append it now to the messages that means for the second run or for the second response we add the response of the first run uh, to messages and uh, additionally after it we you append another message with the role function and the name function group and the content with the answer we got from our function that means we send all of this information again back to gpt 3.5 only to get a user friendly message and not adjacent that means all of this information goes back to chat gpt and as you can see here all of the message is gone and we got a response back from GPT for the second time and this time it's only to make uh, the JSON com uh, convert JSON to a user-friendly message and uh, this message we appended to our messages and here we loop through all of the messages and uh, print the role and the corresponding content and after everything is done, we can scroll down to check the answers. First, we printed out the function response, which as you can see is uh, like uh, location Berlin and temperature 72. Then we output all of the, our messages. Here, user has the prompt the weather in Berlin in Fahrenheit. Uh, then we got the answer from ChatGPT. We don't, I don't have any content for it, but I can uh, make a function call. The function is get current weather with the location Berlin and Fahrenheit. And this is all sent and uh, uh, sent another message with the role function. And uh, we got the, all of this information and uh, we send it back to ChatGPT. And if everything is done, the second response has to format the JSON to a user-friendly message. And if we scroll up, we see that the message is uh, indeed, the current temperature is in Berlin is 72 degree Fahrenheit. The weather is sunny and windy. So this time that means uh, the JSON is now converted to a user-friendly message and we have the finish reason to stop. That means there would be no other uh, function calls or thing because uh, ChatGPT has now the final answer and uh, which uh, give it back to the user. So we here see f uh, four messages, one for user, one is the, the decision that uh, it doesn't have any answer and has to use a function call. Then we have the function call and then assistant the final answer. So if we wanted to print it, uh, print the messages in a chatbot, we have to use the first one, the user, and the last one, assistant. And the intermediate steps, the uh, function doesn't have to be shown. 